Good morning everybody and welcome to Saturday Club. It's a grey day um, here in um, Barnum but um, but my flat, my house is nice and warm and I'm very glad to be with you and I wonder what you've been doing this week. I know some of you have gone back to school after half term, I hope that went well and uh, of course here in England um, we've we've gone back into lockdown which means that we can't go and do things that we were doing or, or see people who we were seeing but we can still join together online now I've been very busy yesterday evening do you remember last week I showed you some socks and I said I was going to make something out of the socks well I sat down last night I haven't finished all of the socks but I made some things out of the socks and I've got them here so some of my socks had little polar bear faces on and I've turned them into little polar bears with woolly hats and ribbon scarves and so I've got one here with a green and brown hat and a green and white scarf and then I did one with a pink and blue hat and a pink scarf and then a yellow and uh, and a yellow and pink hat with a yellow scarf and then some of them had little brown grey bear faces on them so here's one and they've got little pointy ears so here's one with an orange hat and a blue bobble and an orange scarf and another one with um, a red hat with a pink bobble and a red scarf <laughs> oh I've got the hiccups and then the last one I made last night has got a blue and green hat and a blue scarf so I had great fun making these last night and they've all got beans in beans on their bottom half so so that they stay up and then they're squishy on the top and everything's all fixed down so I had great fun making those and uh, they're for some very special children so that's one of the things that I haven't done much many I hadn't done many making things this week and then I thought oh I really want to make something last night and I decided to make those but I'm gonna have to stop I've got more socks they haven't got little faces on but I've got more socks but I'm running out of stuffing and I'm running out of beans to put in them so I'm going to have to get some toy stuffing so that I can make some more socks and put Christmas hats on them. So I wonder what else you've been doing. I know a lot of you have been making the craft because I had so many pictures of your crafts this week. I couldn't believe it. So here are the three boys from my church and it's really good to see they're all doing the crafts now so this one is Joel's the youngest and this one is Reuben the middle ones and this is Josiah the oldest and I hear Josiah that you also made a rocket and a shooting star using the same method so that was really good Josiah so aren't they good and I like the way they're all different colours and then those four boys I often talk about, they've been busy doing lots of crafts this week. Now, I can't remember what age they all come in, so I, I won't tell you that. But this is, um, this is Daniel's flies, and he made three flies, and I can see that he also used the straw. So Daniel made three different flies, and then he also did the craft from last week from the week before last with the lice on the animals so here is the uh, here is Daniel's pepper lice animals and they're really good and uh, I really like you can't see it very well but this person has got definitely got a very sad and grumpy face because of all the lice they've got on them and then this one is Luke's so Luke has done these three flies and I can see he's done really careful colouring in on this one he's even given the fly a red a red leg at the front so well done Luke and then this is Luke's um, these are Luke's animals with lice on them and Luke's actually give it, drawn the lice he's done little spots all over them for the lice I thought that was a very clever idea and then this This is Noah's, and Noah's done very colourful flies. If flies like that flew around, they'd be quite pretty. With flies I see are normally black, but Luke's done very colour. Not Luke. Noah's done very colourful flies. And then here, are, 
a Noah's animals and I think he's drawn spots on them and he's put pepper on the lice as well. So well done Noah. And uh, a little smiley face, this person's quite happy about being covered with lice. And then last one is Isaac. And I've just realised I don't think I don't think I got a picture of Isaac's animals, but here are Isaac's flies. And he's done. You heard of a fly called a blue bottle? Well, that's definitely a blue bottle because it's all blue. So that's Isaac's flies. And then I also had a picture, and this is a real. It was a really nice surprise because. I got a picture, not just of Joffiel and Kate's craft, but I got a picture of Joffiel and Kate. So here are Joffiel and Kate with their flies, and they're in their mouths, they're ready to send them shooting across the room, and that's a lovely picture of you both, Joffiel and Kate. So thank you very much for that. So I can see that you all had great fun with the craft last week, and I hope you'll enjoy the craft this week as well. I've been having great fun. I had great fun last night getting it ready and then this morning I thought oh there's something I could do to make it even better so I had to change it. I had to do something else this morning as well. So I've nearly finished my cup of tea. You know sometimes I don't get to finish my cup of tea. Well I've nearly finished it. We need, hopefully I'll finish it before we start. So um I wonder who's watching this morning. I need to say hello to Josiah and Reuben and Joel. I know that you watch on Sunday afternoon. So hello Josiah, hello Reuben, hello Joel. And uh, hello for Sunday afternoon. And then your cousins Brandon and Jaden and Layla. Hello, are you still watching? And then I need to say hello and thank you very much to the lovely pictures to Isaac and Daniel and Luke and Noah. And um, I'm glad you're still watching and that you're enjoying the crafts. And then hello also in London, Finley and Bethany, hello. And I don't know if Scarlett and Gracie down the road are watching. Hello Scarlett, hello Gracie. And then moving over to Switzerland, we've got Michaela and Matthias, hello. And uh, then Jamie and Emily. I hear you've got a new Bible, Jamie. I hope you're enjoying it. So hello Jamie, hello Emily. And then Jessie and Lena. Hello Jessie, hello Lena, and then Nina, and then Irina and Sonia, hello to you as well. And I don't know if your cousin in Indonesia, Michelle, is watching. And then in Luxembourg, we've seen a picture of them already. Hello Joffiel, hello Kate. And in France, bonjour Luc, bonjour Julia. And, uh, and then all the way in Australia, hello Ryan, are you enjoying the summer sunshine? It's so lo it's lovely and sunny over in Australia at the moment, and then in India, hello Paul, and um, in also in India, Praslin, and I don't know if anyone else is watching as well. I don't know whether um, anyone's watching. It's always nice to hear who's watching, and to hear whether you're enjoying Saturday Club. So I think I've got everything ready. Now just just got time to finish my tea. So, and I've remembered I did something else this week that I could show you on back in a minute. I'm very proud of this. I do an art, I run some art activities on a Thursday night and this Thursday we were doing wildlife portraits and I'm not very good at drawing animals but I managed to paint a badger. This is my badger and we were doing it for an art competition so I'm going to I think I'm going to send my canvas off to the art competition to to see if they like my badger and I didn't use a paintbrush you, you'll never guess what I painted it with I painted it with a sponge and with q-tips a sponge and with q-tips and there we are I made a badger so that's something else that I've done this week I had great fun doing that now it is time to start so we're going to ask God to be with us so we're going to put our hands together and close our eyes and ask God to be with us dear God thank you that you have kept us safe this week thank you that we can sit down and learn wonderful stories from your Bible and learn about your power and about the messages you have for us. Be with us today. Amen. 
I hope you said a nice big amen. Now, we've been learning a memory verse, and it's rather a long part of the Bible that we're learning because we're learning a psalm. And a psalm is a song that someone sang to God. And this psalm is Psalm 23, and it was written by David, who at the time was a shepherd, although he later became a king. Now, I've I had a brainwave this week. I bought a book to keep my psalms, my verses in, so that I don't get them muddled up. So I've got a lovely book. So let's see if we can remember the words, first of all, to Psalm 23. So we have, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that's as far as we've got. So let's see if we can remember all of the actions. Are you ready? You need to make an L for Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And do you remember last week I said that we were going to learn why we don't fear any evil this week? So let's get the right part of our verse up here we are i will fear no evil for thou that means god we're talking to god here for thou art with me because god is with us thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and a shepherd would have had a rod which he would use to guide the sheep to show them where to go if if a sheep was wandering off the path he would give it a tap and guide the sheep back and then a staff was a shepherd's crook that he would use to draw the sheep along. So it's about God guiding and leading us and showing us where to go. And we've got some actions for that. So it's, for thou, point to heaven, art with me, bring your fists together, thy rod and thy staff. Imagine you've got a rod in one hand and a staff in the other. They comfort me. Let's do that again. For thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me let's see if we can say the whole psalm so far the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You're doing so well at learning that psalm. and It's a really good psalm to learn. It's a really good part of the Bible to learn because it can really help us. Now, we are going to be thinking all about animals that live on a farm today. But not a farm in England, a farm in Egypt. So I've got a picture of some of the animals that you might see in a farm in Egypt. So we'll start off with an easy one. We've been talking about shepherds and there might be some sheep. And then also you might have these pictures too, so maybe you could point them. And then also on the farm there might be an animal that goes moo what animal goes moo it's a cow and then there might be an animal in the farms in egypt that went eh, 
o e o. What animal was that? That's right, a donkey. And then there were some animals that went nay, nay. Can you find the horse? And then some animals that we maybe don't know so well. There's an animal that I think it probably goes kind of moo, moo. An oxen. And there's an oxen there. An oxen going moo. And then there's an animal. I'm sorry to tell you that this animal spits. Well, I don't want you to spit, but I do want you to go. Can you do that? And it's a camel, a camel with two humps. And we're going to sing a song. Now you might know the song, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Do you know that song? Well, we're going to sing, because our song is about Egypt and about the King of Egypt, Pharaoh, we're going to sing, Mr. Pharaoh Had a Farm in the Land of Egypt. And if you don't know it, then I hope you'll pick up the tune. And we're going to, I'm going to hold up the animals and I want you to make the right noise. So, Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt. And on that farm he had some sheep in the land of Egypt. With a bear here and a bear there. Here a bear, there a bear, everywhere a bear, bear. Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt and on that farm he had some cows in the land of Egypt with a moo here and a moo there here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo moo Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt and on that farm he had some Donkeys in the land of Egypt with an e or here and an e or there here an e or there an e or everywhere an e or Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt and on that farm he had some horses in the land of Egypt with a nay here and a nay there. Here a nay, there a nay, everywhere a nay, nay. Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt. And on that farm he had some oxen in the land of Egypt. With a meh, here and a meh, there. Here a meh, there a meh, everywhere a meh, meh. Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt. And on that farm he had some camels in the land of Egypt with a p there and p there here p there p every p Mr. Pharaoh had a farm in the land of Egypt. Oh, I've got a sore throat after singing all of that. And that's got good news, not good news, because the next thing that we're going to sing is another song. I'll have a drink of water. And I think the next song that we're going to sing is we're going to sing Deep and Wide. We haven't sung that one for a while. Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And this is where I need not to get muddled up. So are you ready? Deep and wide. Deep and wide there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. For you, for me, for you, for me, for you, for me there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. For you, for me, for you, for me there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And that song is all about how there's a fountain of God's love and a fountain where we can be claimed from our sins and the times we break God's good laws and be forgiven. But when we sing it sometimes, we miss out some words. So we're going to miss out the words deep 
and wide. We're just going to do the actions. Are you ready? And, and there's a fountain flowing and, and, and there's a fountain flowing and for you, for me, for you, for me, there's a fountain flowing and for you, for me, for you, for me, there's a fountain flowing and did you remember not to say deep or wide? I bet some of you forgot. Right, now, in Saturday Club, all of our stories come from the Bible. And I wonder, can you remember how many books there are in the Bible? Oh, I need to turn this round. How many books are there in the Bible? If I lift it up so that you can see them all. That's right, there are 66 books in the Bible, but they all tell one big story. The story of God's plan to send Jesus. And today's story still comes from the second book of the Bible, not Genesis, but Exodus. It comes from the second book of the Bible, Exodus. And here is the book of Exodus. And I'm going to read part of that story to you now. So I'm going to get my Bible and I'm going to open it up at Exodus chapter 9 and I'm going to read you verses 1 to 4. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep, there shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Egypt, Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. Now there were some hard words in that Bible reading, but don't worry, I'll explain all of them to you in the story. I'm just going to move my chair forward because it's banging against the wall. So, in Saturday Club we're learning about the book of Exodus. And in the book of Exodus, God has made a picture for us in the Bible. It's a picture of God's plan to save sinners. Remember, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt and they were being very cruelly treated. But God had a plan to rescue them. And as we're learning about God's plan to rescue the Israelites, we're learning about God's plan to rescue us from our sins. Now, God had been sending Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh with a message. And that message was, let my people go. But Pharaoh had a hard heart. He wouldn't listen to God. He kept on saying, no. So God had started doing wonderful, but frightening things in Egypt, which would show to Pharaoh and all the Egyptians that God was God and we call them the ten plagues of Egypt and so far we've learnt about four plagues the plague of blood when the river and the water turned to blood and all the fish died and we learnt about the plague of frogs when frogs came up out of the river and covered the land of Egypt and we learnt about the plague of lice, when itchy lice were all over the people and the animals. And then, last week, we learnt about the plague of flies, when swarms of flies flew all over the land of Egypt. Now, last week we learnt that Pharaoh tried to bargain with God. He said... I will let the Israelites go and worship God, but don't go too far away. 
God, Moses asked God to take the flies away and God did but then Pharaoh changed his mind and would not let the Israelites go. So God sent Moses back to Pharaoh again. God sent Pharaoh to Moses with a warning. Let my people go. And if you will not let my people go, but carry on holding them in Egypt, then my hand will be on your cows and horses and donkeys and camels and oxen and sheep. They will be very ill indeed. God was saying that he was going to send a horrible illness upon all of the farm animals in Egypt. And remember, God made all of the animals and God is in control of all things. God had power to send a sickness on the animals. That is why God told Pharaoh that his hand would be on the animals. But that wasn't the end of God's message. God said, I will make a difference between the animals of the Egyptians and the animals of the Israelites. None of the Israelite animals shall die. Only the animals of the Egyptians will die. God was making sure that Pharaoh knew that this illness was from him. Even though they all lived very close together in Egypt, the Israelite animals wouldn't catch the illness from the Egyptian animals. Then God said, this will happen tomorrow. God's message to Pharaoh was really clear and easy to understand. God was going to send a horrible illness on all the farm animals in Egypt. They would die and this would happen tomorrow, but the Israelite animals would not become ill or die. And that is what happened. Pharaoh wouldn't listen to God. And the very next day, all of the farm animals in Egypt became sick and died. All of the oxen, all of the donkeys, all of the camels, all of the sheep, all of the cows, all of the horses, they all became sick and died. But none of the farm animals that belonged to the Israelites died. Not one of them. Pharaoh heard that all of the farm animals in Egypt had died. He wanted to see if everything that God had said had been true. So he sent messengers to see if the Israelite farm animals were still alive. And the messengers came back and said, not one of the Israelite farm animals have died. Pharaoh had seen God's power. He had seen that God was able to kill all of the farm animals in Egypt with a horrible illness. But the God was also able to protect all of the Israelite farm animals. Do you think Pharaoh listened to God and let the Israelites go? No. Pharaoh hardened his heart. He would not let the Israelites go. Now, in our story today from the Bible, Pharaoh wanted to find out if what God had said was true. So he sent messengers to see if God had really protected all of the farm animals that belonged to the Israelites. And his messengers came back and said, yes, it's true. But even though Pharaoh could see that God had spoken the truth, he did not listen to God. He still had a hard heart. Sometimes people decide that they want to find out about what God has said. They read the Bible and they go to church. They might listen very carefully to what God has said, but then they don't do anything about it. Maybe they think that it will be too difficult to obey God. Maybe they don't want to change deep down. Maybe they want to keep on doing things that please them, not things that please God. This is what Pharaoh did. He knew that God spoke the truth, but he still didn't obey God. And we need to be careful not just to listen to what God says to us, but also to obey it. It's not enough to just say, oh yes, I think the Bible is true. 
The Bible says that even Satan, God's enemy, says that the Bible is true and that God is real. If we believe the Bible is true, we need to come to God and ask him to forgive us. And we need to ask God to forgive us because Jesus died on the cross for us. And then we need to ask God for his help to obey him and to stop sinning and breaking God's good laws and turn away from sin and turn towards doing what pleases God. If we really believe in Jesus, we will change what we do. That's how we show that we really believe in Jesus. So we're going to pray now and we're going to ask God to help us to do that. Let's put our hands together and close our eyes. Dear God, thank you that all of your messages in the Bible are true. Help us to believe your message and come to you and ask you to forgive us because Jesus died on the cross for us. And then help us to obey you and live changed lives because we believe in Jesus. Amen. Right, now, I hope that in your sheet to take, your, your pack to take home, you have got a paper cow toy. And some of you might notice that the words aren't in English, they're in French. So Luke and Julia will be pleased. But it's a paper cow toy to cut out and put together. Now, I'm not sure what you do with this bit here and this bit here. So I just cut out the main body of the cow. So I've got the cow like this that I've cut out. And I'm going to put a face on it. And I want you to make two cows. And I'm going to put a happy face on this cow because it's going to be my cow that lived, an Israelite cow. So I'm going to draw a smiley face on my cow. There we go. There's my smiley face. And then you need to fold along all of the dotted lines. You might need a grown up to help you with this. Fold along all of the dotted lines. There's a dotted line there. And 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 then all of the little flaps where it says col, that means glue in French, you need to glue your cow together. And I've got and I've got my two that I made earlier. I'll just go and get them. So here are my two cows. Here's my cow with a happy face. That's an Israelite cow that didn't die. And here's my cow with a sad face. That's an Egyptian cow that died. Now, what you can do, now some of you might not want to do this and that's okay, but what you can do is one of two things. Either you could take a photograph with a sad cow lying on its side because it's died, but what you could do to show that the sad cow died is you could crush it up because they died. So that you've got one cow that was crushed that died and one cow that lived. But it's up to you. You might not want to do that because you've made your cow. But if you do, you can do that and take me take a photo showing me the cow that the cow that shows us the Egyptian animals died and the cow that shows us that the Israelite animals lived. So that's something to take a, to do at home. And then if you're older, you've got a puzzle sheet. Oh. I forgot to print mine out two-sided, never mind. So on the front, you have got the um, a word search and you've got lots of different words from the Bible passage that we read, all of the different animals and, uh, and different words from the passage. And then on the back, there's a think box and it says, Pharaoh knew God was speaking the truth, but he still didn't listen. Why do you think that was? So it's something for you to think about. And then there's our memory verse to unscramble. And this is the kind of memory verse where you've got the letters that go in the boxes, underneath the boxes, and you've got to work out which letter goes in which box to make the memory verse. So that's things for you to take away at home. So I hope you've enjoyed Saturday Club. Oh, and I need to, here are my animals that died. The illness on the animals. I'm going to put that up on my board.
So what we're going to do is we're going to sing one last song and we're going to sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Jesus died for you and me. And remember, when we get to the Amen, you need to say a nice, great big Amen. You ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Jesus died for you and me. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, gave his life for sinful men. Amen. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, I believe the Bible's true. U, V, W, God has promised you. X, Y, Z, a home ahead. I don't think your amens were loud enough. We'll sing it one more time. I want you to say amen really, really loud. Are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Jesus died for you and me. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Gave his life for sinful men. Amen. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. I believe the Bible's true. U, V, W, God has promised you. X, Y, Z, a home ahead. Very good. Right, well, thank you very much for joining me at Saturday Club and I'll see you next Saturday at the same time. Bye-bye.